Hey guys, so today we're going to be learning how to make a directional map. You can use a directional map for your website, you can use it for a piece of marketing, a flyer, an invitation to a party, and it's a really cool feature. It adds some cool graphics and it's really easy to make. So we're going to be making all of this in a free software. So check that out, grab the link and let's see how we get it. So the link will take you to this website. Um, the software is called eDraw Max by Wondershare. And if you go up here to products, click on eDraw Max. Now this software is super capable. Um, I do a, a little bit more high level review in this card up to one of these sides here. So check that out. You can click on download here and here's eDraw Max. So they have it for Windows, for Mac users, Linux users. They also have an online version. Personally don't like it quite as much. It's a little bit more user friendly in my opinion to just download the free application to your desktop. So once you've done that, here we are in the software. One cool thing to note is this looks a lot like a typical Microsoft Office application. If you've used Visio or Word or PowerPoint, you're going to be right at home here with the different toolbars. There's a few different things that we'll point out along the way. But as you can see at the top here, we have our little tabs with the different toolboxes inside of them to do different things. And off to the left here is going to be our symbol toolbox where we're going to refer to quite often to go and grab our shapes. And then we have some customizing pieces off here to the right hand side. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to start a new document. Just off to the left here we have our high level categories. We're going to be clicking on engineering to get to the map. And we have a few different types of maps that you could make. Today again we're going to be focused on directional map. Now if you wanted to you could start from one of these templates. That's not a real uh, easy thing to do when you're using a map unless you're just kind of making something random but for something s specific right where you've got a an area that you're targeting um, streets that are unique we're gonna start from a blank a blank template here okay so now we got our symbols um, if you open up these layers you can kind of see what's inside each of these we have our symbols landmarks some pointers and some vehicles. Now you're like, okay, well, there's there's got to be more, more than that, right? So we can click on more symbols. We have access to all those high-level categories that we saw in the templates page right here. So we have access to, if we go to engineering and back to maps, you can see there's a whole bunch of um, symbols that were turned off that we can turn back on if we want to. So the road signs may be kind of cool. Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as what we're going to be doing today. Um, but this is where you would go and find more symbols. All right, so how do we make a road? Let's just start with a basic line. Making a map is very easy and intuitive. You can grab and make an intersection as well. Scale that up. It has a nice, you can turn the grid feature on and off if you if you don't like the snapping. Um, so some of these shapes work a little bit differently. You can see how they scale. All right, now we want to add a roundabout here. This is a little roundabout. You can grab the legs. but it's really easy to drag things around and make them look really nice. All right, so now if we're gonna label our streets, for the horizontal lines, I found you can just double click and name this one. Let's say this is 94th Street. For the vertical ones, it's a little tricky. Instead of double clicking, because if you do that, it's it's seeing the street as or it's seeing this particular intersection we came up where we pulled in this T right and it's and it's going to label the box down here so one trick to get around that 
is if you just double click anywhere on the grid, we can go ahead and label this Oops. Fifth Avenue. And then what we can do with that is we click on it, we can just quickly rotate it 90 degrees and make that look nice. If you wanted to change your font, we can do that super easily. Just grab a nice font. And if we like that, and we'll update it to look nice and neat. All right, so now we want to add some cool other features. Say there's a big school here on the corner. Some things for people to be able to watch out for. All right, we've got a tree. We've got some happy trees here off to the side of the road. Again, copy paste is your friend here. To kind of make this look like a little forest. All right, where is the destination? The destination is right here next to the forest. Better label this road so people know what this is called, right? So pretty cool. We can add like a little park down here if we wanted to. There was something there. Maybe we know of some road construction here. You can say you gotta avoid this at all costs because this is just gonna be a disaster. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Uh, drop a comment, drop a like if this is providing value to, if, to you, if it's helping you out, let me know. What are you guys going to use this tutorial for? What kind of map are you going to make? Let me know in the comments. Maybe people need a place to stay. We can tell them if you're coming, don't worry. There's a hotel just down the street. We can also send things to a different layer. We can go send to back or you can send it to a background which will essentially hide it from this layer. This is another cool way to kind of like highlight something if you wanted to or highlight an area. We quickly change our fill color if we want to. All right, looking pretty good. So again, we can add um, all kinds of fun things to this. If you wanted to add, let's say there was a, a river down here, um, you can take these swirly ones and the way you modify this is you come up to symbols here and we click on convert anchor and then we get these little anchors that we can move around we can kind of tweak if you say move anchor we can kind of tweak the way that this flows if we don't like the way it works right now and then if we want to increase the thickness to the line here and chunky go back to our select tool and then we can expand this out make it a little bit more of a river color there and now it kind of matches our hotel doesn't it let's see it runs through like this so now we have a cool river running through the center of our town and again we can send this back so it will go, you can send that backwards to go underneath the streets. And now we have a cool river. If you wanted to, you can even add a bridge. Here's a bridge. Extend that over. A lot of cool things you can do with this. You can even, if you wanted to, you can bring in your own graphics or photos by simply importing uh, an SVG. The other thing we can do is if you are constantly searching for different symbols that you like to use all the time, if you come up here to more symbols and say my library and we click and check my library, it will show up here. And these are symbols that I use a lot in the software and they're right here at my disposal. So if you want to kind of customize your own little toolbox for different things, you can do that too. And I'll show you how to add a new one. So let's say I'm going to use this road sign a lot. Just click on it, come over here to my library and hit the plus button. And now that symbol is in my library. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and uh, good luck on making your own map. We can grab our format painter and paint 